we always hear about Our Lady and how important she is, and but then it's like, well, I mean, if you look at scripture in the New Testament, like she doesn't speak much, and you, she's not really in a lot of stories in the, in the gospel passages, and so sometimes it makes me want, like, people wonder if she's so important as Catholics say that she is, then why is she not in scripture? Welcome back to God Mod. My name is Casey. I make Catholic content to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus and Mary. And today we're going to tackle the question, why is Mary, our Blessed Mother, not in scripture more? I mean, it's a great question, right? I mean, even as Catholics, we can think, why, why isn't Our Lady in scripture more, you know? We, we read the New Testament and she's not really there a whole lot. Uh, and so before we get into this, it's important, I'm gonna give you three reasons why this is the case. And before we get started, it is important to note that our church, we are not scripture alone. We believe the scripture has the highest authority. We believe that scripture is without error, that it's infallible, that it is inspired by God, that God is the author of scripture. However, we do not believe in scripture alone, like many other churches that say we only believe in scripture. Because the church came before the New Testament. The church came before scripture. Um, and and that's, and, the, and the Jesus gave authority to the church to interpret scripture, to teach scripture and nobody else. And so that's and super important to know that as Catholics, we have a twofold source of revelation. We have tradition and we have scripture. And Jesus' words, his spoken words when he was here on earth, that came before any of the New Testament writers wrote anything down. So that is his words, his very words itself, speak more volumes than to the written word of what people said about him, although they are inspired by God and without error. We must note that the church came before the New Testament. In fact, the first book of the New Testament wasn't written until 34 AD, which is after Jesus had already even ascended into heaven. And so, you know, like we really, we really have to listen to what tradition, what the apostles were doing, what they learned just from Jesus that maybe weren't written down, but then also um, what the, how the church explains scripture. In fact, if you look at um, John chapter 21, verses 24 through 25, Jesus, or John writes, in his gospel, it says there were many things that Jesus did that not enough books could be wrote about the things that he said and did. Which means that Jesus did and said so many more things than just what they were able to write down in the New Testament. Which means that we have to look at tradition, we have to look at the apostles' practices, we have to look at what the early church did and what they taught because not everything was written down. And so we have to look at the practices and, and what they said. So we must understand scripture uh, through the church. So with that being said, let's look at our Blessed Mother, Our Lady Mary. Now, we need to distinguish between quantity and quality. It's true. Quantity-wise, Our Lady is not in scripture much. However, there's a lot of prefigurements of her in the Old Testament and then in the New Testament. We don't see a lot of quantity, but we must look at quality as well. In fact, if you look at, if you think about scripture, especially the New Testament, what are the most important moments of, of the New Testament? When Jesus was born and when Jesus died. And guess who was there in those moments? Our Lady. So Our Lady was literally at the incarnation and the redemption of humanity. The, the, the two acts of the greatest acts of all of history, Our Lady was there. So. The whole, like, Our Lady's not even in scripture very much means nothing to the point of she was at the two greatest events in all of human history. Okay, so let's get into it. Three reasons why Our Lady is not mentioned a bunch within scripture. The first reason is because the divinity of Jesus had to be established before the veneration of Mary. The focus has to always be on Jesus, always on Jesus. In fact, Our Lady always wants all the attention on Jesus. So the whole point of scripture is to reveal God. And that is what the New Testament had to do. That he, The New Testament had to reveal who Jesus was and who had the heart, who he was, and he, he's God. Um, 
So that is what the whole point and the and the purpose of scripture is to reveal who God is. Um, and so it had to establish Christ's divinity before uh, it talks about veneration to Our Lady. The second reason is because back then there were many pagan religions and what do we know about these pagan religions is that they would assign different divinities and gods to um, different objects and some of those were, were goddesses. They were they were feminine in nature, these, these gods. Um, and so scripture, you know, God had to be careful when he presented Our Lady because, you know, present like giving scripture in a time of such pagan religion all around uh, it would be if if scripture focused too much on our lady the people could very easily see her as a goddess and that's not what she is that's not who that's not who she is that's not what god wants people to see her as and so that's one reason why our lady is not mentioned just like a whole bunch throughout the new testament is because of the time and the context of of the people and and who scripture was being written for in that in that space and time because yes we need to have veneration to our lady but we cannot worship her as a divine god because that's not who she is the third reason why mary is not mentioned a lot in scripture and this is my favorite one and it is because she's an example of hidden holiness oh so good uh I mean, think about it. She is an example of hidden holiness for all the generations to come, for all people to come. Think about you. You know, like, we're, I mean, we are all special, but we're all not, like, that special. You know what I mean? And so, to think that we are called to this hidden holiness, this hidden holy life with our uh, with our Lord, uh, and how Our Lady is such a model of that, it's just so beautiful. Um, and, you know, if you think about it, like, it wasn't her vocation to be a priest or to be an apostle. Jesus did not call his mother to be an apostle. There's a reason for that. You know, he chose 12 men for a reason and his mother had a different role in that. And she can be an example of, to us for that. She was also, if you think about it, she was with Jesus 10 times more than the apostles were. She was with Jesus from the time of his birth all the way up until when he was 30 years old you know, and it was one of the last three years of his life when she would only see him here and there in his ministry. And so the, for the first 30 years of his life, she was constantly by his side. You know, she probably learned so much from Jesus that she could have been a great teacher. She could have been a great prophet. She could have been this great um, influencer in that time. And yet that wasn't her vocation. That wasn't her call. And she submitted to the Lord's call in that. You know, she, her call was in hidden holiness, and that's what she did. And it's a great example for all of us to aspire to be like Our Lady, to not seek attention and to, you know, be famous and to have power, and but to live the, a hidden holy life with our Lord. So even though Mary is not in Scripture a lot or in the New Testament a lot, she is there in the most vital, important moments in all of Scripture, in the redemption and the, the incarnation and the redemption of mankind like that is just huge uh and so we must keep we must keep that in mind whenever we start to doubt like you know who mary is for us and the, is she is she really that important yes she is that important because she is the mother of the word incarnate the mother of the divine son the mother of our lord jesus that is crazy like she deserves all the veneration in the world I mean, if you just think about your own mom and your own love for your mom and how you want your friends to respect your own mom, how much more does Jesus want his friends, his lovers, his beloved friends, his, his brothers and sisters to, uh, to venerate and to praise and to, and to have respect for his own mother? So, as, as once stated by many saints, you know, you can never love Our Lady too much because Jesus will always love her more. Anyway, God bless.